Can this PC with no GPU actually game? Now keep in mind, this is a budget PC. Now this PC can definitely still game, but if you wanted to make it even better, down the line, adding a graphics card is really easy. And we'd recommend something like the RX 560 or 570, or the GTX 1050 Ti, or if you wanna go pretty much the top of the line for this PC, we'd go the GTX 1660 Super. That would be the max we'd go without major bottleneck. The customer sent us this message that we thought was really funny. Don't worry, this one won't explode. Building this PC is extremely easy. This will be an in-depth guide, so feel free to skip around as needed. Step one, I'm gonna show you how to put together the motherboard. Carefully unbox your CPU and CPU cooler. Just put the CPU cooler to the side right now, and we're just gonna need the CPU. Unhook the CPU socket and make sure when putting in the CPU, you match the dot with the arrow or dot on the CPU. The CPU should have one to match with it. Once it fit in nicely, put on the CPU socket cover again and make sure it's nice and secure. Next up, we got the RAM. This one has two sticks, and we're gonna want to make sure we're going on two opposite slots. So not two slots next to each other. Follow exactly what I did here, and you want to push until you hear the click. After the RAM, we're moving on to the storage. Now this has two slots for the M.2. We do not wanna use that top one, because that only supports 11th gen processors for this motherboard. So we're gonna be using the bottom one and we're going to put it in till we hear that click and then use the M.2 screw that came with the motherboard and make sure you do not tighten it too much because it will break off. And trust me, I learned that the hard way. And last step here for the motherboard, we're putting on the CPU cooler. We're just using the Intel stock cooler for this build and it comes with one fan header for the motherboard. I'll show you where that goes in a second. Now, with these Intel stock coolers, it is a little tricky. You wanna make sure you hear the click on each of the corners that you push down. If you don't hear that click, it is not in all the way, and then that is, that is no good, it'll fall off. On this motherboard, the CPU fan header is right next to the RAM, and it just goes in nice and easy, and I usually like to tuck the cables right in the middle. All right, next step here, we're going to need the computer case. Now safely flip over the case with one hand on the bottom and before taking off the foam, I recommend taking your screwdriver and getting all the static out because it will shock you. And trust me, I learned that the hard way too. Once the case is removed, we are going to also remove the glass panel and the side panel. Just take off the screws and you're going to want to remove this little screw kit. Sometimes they put it on the back here. Now this part's just a cable management preference, but we like to flip the fans 90 degrees so the cable kind of fits nicer in the back and you don't see as much as of that fan cable. So I'm just flipping it. You see how the cable's a little bit higher now. You just unscrew the four screws and then tilt it and then put it back. After that, let's take your IO shield that can be found in the motherboard and let's put this in. Now we wanna make sure we put this in correctly, so I like to match it up with the motherboard just so I know which uh, side it goes in when we put it in the case. Now when we put it in the case, it should click. You should be able to hear the clicking sound to make sure it is in all the way. Before screwing the motherboard into the case, make sure you have enough standoffs to match the holes on the motherboard. So count the holes and make sure on the case itself, there's enough standoffs to fit the motherboard you chose. Once everything adds up, safely slide the motherboard into that IO shield. And next we're gonna be screwing it in. Now make sure you are using the correct screws or it will get stuck. Pause the video if you need to, to make sure you're using the right screws. For this next step, we're going to be getting ready for the cable management. So I'm just organizing the cables here and making sure nothing's tangled up. 
So the key to good cable management is making sure none of the cables are tangled together. So I like to separate them all the best I can to make sure I can get them to go exactly where I want without any entanglement. And what I like about the Apivia Prodigy is how easy it is to cable manage. They give you this nice, long, thick cable to wrap all the other cables around. So you can easily zip tie it on the top here like I'm doing, and it all kind of blends into one cable so it looks really clean. Oh yeah, and the other key to good cable management is a lot of zip ties. So make sure you have a lot of uh, zip ties on standby. Now that we got a good little foundation here for the cable management, let's start plugging stuff in before we add the power supply. Let's start with the USB 3. This one goes on the side close to the RAM. Next up, I like to plug in the audio and the USB, the regular USB. The audio usually always goes on the bottom left side of the motherboard and make sure you orientate it right. It can only fit one way. And then usually right next to it labeled, you'll see USB and that'll plug in very close. So you can tightly pull the cables for cable management. Now, all we have left is the panel. Refer to this chart to help. We're going to be putting the HD LED first, starting from the bottom left, and then going to bottom right, we're going reset switch facing down, and then the plus and minus, plus going first, and then minus second, keep them together. Those are gonna go on the top left, then right next to it, we're doing the power switch. Oh yeah, more zip ties. Gonna be using a lot more of those. So what I'm doing here now is just cleaning up a little bit, zip tying before we put the power supply in. We could put it in now. All this is kind of just preference on how clean and how cable managed you want it to look. And we got our modular power supply. I like these because it makes cable managing really easy and look really clean. For this particular build, because we do not have a GPU yet, we are only gonna need the Molex cable. So we take the two SATA cables, we'll just put those away, and we'll put the PCIe cable, we'll also put that away, and we'll just need the Molex for this build. Now that our power supply is set up, with the fan facing down, we're going to insert the power supply into the case. The power supply uses a particular screw as well, so pause to make sure you're using the right one. Now all we have to do is plug in a few more cables and finish up the cable management and we are done. So we're gonna take this and put it on the side. Make sure you push really hard and hear that click. This one's a little bit tough sometimes. Now personally, I like to cable manage as I go just to keep everything neat as I plug stuff in. It makes it easier so you don't mix anything up. So I'm just, zip tying here making sure everything kind of stays together and then i'm zip tying that to the original cords just to keep it all in one bunch we have one last thing to plug in here it is the cpu so we're going to zip tie as we go put it through that top right hole and then on the other side you'll see the cpu port right next to the cpu fan So last couple things here, we're going to plug in the Molex, we're going to plug them together, making sure that the white part is on top, 
and that is actually going to plug into that molex cable that we plugged in earlier to the power supply and that will plug into that white clear part and that will power the rgb on the fans and the fans themselves now this is the led switch getting a little close up here you want to make sure the led switch is plugging into those two pins that i just zoomed in on them now this part is a little unnecessary. We like to zip tie the Molex together so it doesn't fall off. This is mostly because we ship the PCs and we don't want it to fall off during shipping, but you definitely do not have to do this if you don't want to. Once you are finished, we're going to put that side panel back on and moment of truth, we're gonna turn it on and make sure it all boots up and posts. Good, all the RGBs working. Will it turn on? And there it's posting, good to go.